Today we're going to look at a nice abstract algebra problem from one of the most famous textbooks for abstract algebra. It's written by Herstein and it's called Topics in Algebra. And it's been around for a long time, so I think you can find a used copy for pretty cheap online if you look around. But maybe before we look at our problem and then look at the solution, let's recall what a group is, just for anyone out there that doesn't know. So a set G together with a binary operation, which we'll call star, is called a group if it satisfies the following three axioms. Now before we get into these axioms, I'd like to point out that we use the following notation for this binary operation. We'll write just A next to B, so AB is the same thing as A star B. Now in certain instances where the operation is like clear, we might use a plus or a times or something, but generally for an abstract group, we just put the two like elements next to each other. And we think of it as like some sort of general product or whatever. Okay, so what are the three axioms? Well, first, every group has to have an identity. So that means there's an element which we'll call little e in G, such that A times little e is equal to A, and E times little a is equal to A, and that's true for all A in the group. So if you think about the integers with addition, the identity would clearly be zero, because if you add zero to anything, you end up with whatever you started with. If you're thinking about non-zero real numbers and multiplication, then the identity would be the number one, because multiplying by one just gives you what you started with. Okay, so the next axiom is the axiom of inverses. And that says for every element a in g, there is a b in g, such that a times b is the same thing as b times a, which is the identity. So the inverse is like a path back to the identity. So again, with our example of the integers, the inverse of four would be negative four. That's because if you do four plus negative four, you get back to the identity, which is zero. Now in the case of the multiplicative non-zero real numbers, if you look at the number five, for instance, its inverse would be one over five. That's because five times one over five is equal to one. That's back to the identity. Also, we use the standard notation of B equals A inverse given this setup. And finally, we need this binary operation to be associative. So that means for all A, B, C, and G, A times B times C is the same thing as A times B times C, where we have the following grouping. Notice that we do not require this group to commute. In other words, A times B is not necessarily B times A, and maybe you know something about the product of matrices, and uh, matrix groups are a great example of gr groups that do not commute. So let's look at some basic examples. So first of all, the integers with addition, we've talked about that one. Another one would be maybe the real numbers, the non-zero real numbers, which we denote as follows with multiplication. So I'll just put a dot there to mean multiplication. Nice geometric example would be symmetries of an n-gon. So they have reflection symmetries and rotational symmetries. Or permutations of the set 1 to n to 1 to n. So that would be ways of mixing the numbers 1 to n up. Okay, so we're going to do one more thing before we look at our problem, and that is do a simpler version of this problem. Now, before we tackle our problem, we're going to look at what is a standard exercise in an abstract algebra class. And that is to show that if we've got A and B, which are in a group G, and they satisfy this rule that A times B squared is the same thing as A squared times B squared, then AB is in fact equal to BA. Okay, well, let's jot down a little bit of what's going on here, and then we'll write it down in maybe like a nice one-line proof. So let's expand this left-hand side. Notice if we have a squared times b squared equals a times b squared, that's the same thing as a times b times a times b. But then we can expand out this a squared b squared to a times a times b times b equals a times b times a times b. Okay, nice. 
But now we can left multiply both sides by A inverse and then also right multiply both sides by B inverse and notice that that achieves A times B on the left hand side because this A and A inverse cancel and then B times A on the right hand side because the B and the B inverse cancel on both of the right hand side. So we get A B equals B A. And we could write this into a suitable solution, but I actually like writing it in one like thorough line or in one through line. I just like the aesthetics of it. So let's see how that might go. So let's start with A times B. And then from there, we'll re rewrite this as A inverse times A squared times B squared times B inverse. So really we just left multiplied by A inverse times A, which is the identity, and we right multiplied by B times B inverse, which is again the identity. And now we will apply our rule up here that A squared B squared is A times B squared. So that gives us A inverse, A times B squared, B inverse. Now let's expand this A times B squared out. So we'll have A inverse, A, B, A, B, B inverse. But now this A and A inverse cancel here, this B and B inverse cancel here, and that leaves us with B times A. So we've got like a one maybe equation proof of this rule. Okay, so now let's look at our goal for the video. Now that we're kind of warmed up, we want to look at our main result. And that says if we've got elements of a group A and B such that A times B to the M is equal to A to the M times B to the M for three consecutive natural numbers M, then AB equals BA. So if it happens for three in a row, then it has to happen for all of them. So I think that's a pretty nice result. So let's maybe see how this might work. So let's take n minus 1, n, and n plus 1 to be such that this thing holds. So in other words, those are the m values for which this works. Notice that the, these are three consecutive numbers for sure. So we can write a, b to the n minus 1 is equal to a to the n minus 1, b to the n minus 1. And then a, b to the n is a to the n times b to the n. And then finally, a, b to the n plus 1 is a to the n plus 1, b to the n plus 1, like that. Okay. And now from here, we'd like to somehow smash these together so we can produce this equation AB equals BA. So how might we do that? Well, let's start with this A to the N minus one, B to the N minus one, and see if we can do anything with that. So we have A to the N plus one times B to the N plus one. So that's gonna be the same thing as A times B to the N plus one by our assumption. But now we can factor an AB out of that. So that's AB and then AB to the N just by the definition of exponentiation. But then that'll be A times B times A to the N times B to the N by this second assumption here. Okay, but now from here we can do cancellation. So we can cancel an A from both sides, and that leaves us with A to the N here, and then we can cancel a B to the N from both sides as well, so that leaves a B over here. And then what will we be left with? We'll be left with B times A to the N. So we've got that nice rule right here, that nice relation. Okay, so again, that's from canceling this A here with one of these, and then this B to the N here with all but one of those. Okay, nice. So now let's do something similar, but instead of with these two, let's do them with these two and see what we get. So maybe we'll head this as also, a to the n, b to the n is the same thing as a times b to the n, which is a times b times a times b to the n minus one. And then applying our first relation, that will be a times b times a to the n minus one times b to the n minus one. And then canceling as appropriate 
just like we did up here, gives us something fairly similar. a to the n minus one times b is equal to b times a to the n minus one. So we're left with something like that. Again, doing something that's essentially the same sort of calculation. And now we're really ready to finish this thing off. So let's start with a times b and then work towards b times a. So let's write this first as a times b times a to the n minus one times a to the one minus n. So that may seem kind of silly, but notice a to the n minus one times a to the one minus n is the identity, so we really just multiplied by the identity. Okay, but now we can do the grouping like this. So b with a to the n minus one, and then flip them around using this rule right here. So that'll leave us a times a to the n minus one times b times a to the one minus n. And then from there, we'll group these two and combine them. That leaves us with a to the n b and then a to the one minus n. And then we'll group this a to the n b and then flip them using this boxed equation right here. So that gives us b a to the n, a to the one minus n. But a to the n and a to the one minus n will combine to give us just a, leaving us with just b times a. So now starting over here at a times b, ending over here at b times a, we see that in fact, a times b is equal to b times a, which is exactly what we wanted. Now I've done some other abstract algebra type problems on the channel before. There should be one on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.